In the following video, we're going to be taking a look at an app that I built in bed um, because I'm lazy <laughs> to get YouTube assets out of GPT. And basically what we do is that we combine the Whisper API and the ChatGPT API to take a transcript, uh, turn it into text, and then extract from that text a description, a title, and an art prompt for Dolly to create a thumbnail. So actually we're using three large language models in very different ways to create a YouTube title, description, and thumbnail. We're using speech to text, we're using image uh, creation and Canva, and we're using, which isn't a large language model, but you get my point. And we're using um, ChatGPT. So stick around, it's gonna be pretty interesting, and I'll see you later. Okay. Yes, so, Today, for this video, we're actually going to take something that I already published because, of course, I wasn't going to record because, as you can tell from the title, how GPT helped me write an end-to-end -end app from bed, uh, YT assets from transcript, and I'll talk about what all these things mean in a second. Um, but yeah, I, I basically was in bed one morning and I wanted to create some YouTube assets. I batch record my videos. So I was like, oh man, it would really be great if I could just create a bunch of titles and thumbnails in one go and I didn't have to think about it. So I was like, you know, I think I could use the Whisper API and one thing led to another and yada, yada, yada. Um, but yeah, so this is, we're just going to be reviewing the conversation that I had with GPT to make this a reality. And then I'll show you the repo itself too. Um, so this image is actually generated um, by the process of the, what we're about to see. So it's pretty interesting, right? So um, yeah, so I basically just said that. So I set out the morning, uh, that morning to create a server, uh, because you know, there's stuff that I find tedious about uploading to YouTube, specifically like titles, descriptions, thumbnails, like nobody really wants to do all that work. Most of it's clickbait. Most of it's just to drive people's attention anyway. <laughs> right. And it doesn't really kind of like, I think lend artistically to what anyone wants. Maybe there are a few marketing type people, uh, who really do enjoy the process of coming up with the best title uh, to get the most eyeballs. But that's not really what I care about. I care about programming. So for the AI art prompt, I wanted to just throw that shit into Dolly and take my favorite result and put it in Canva, uh, which I've been doing for the thumbnail for this video that you're watching right now. Uh, so a few things that we're going to be talking about, we're going to be talking about the Whisper API limit. We're going to be talking about exporting ranges of videos as opposed to entire videos. We're going to be talking about Malter, um, uploading forms and insomnia, uh, titles and descriptions, and the AR art prompt. So first, let's take a look real quick at this. Uh, oh, I can't click this. I thought I could uh, to make it bigger. But you can see here that uh, these two Final Cut Pro exports, for this top one here, I'm only uh, cutting 30 seconds. And for this bottom one here, I'm doing the whole 15 minute uh, clip. And you can tell which one is bigger, 30 megs versus 744 kilobytes, right? And Whisper does have a 25 megabyte limit. You can do things where you like split and then kind of like stream in longer clips. But funnily enough, I didn't actually need to do that because at the um, end of these videos, the way that this batch of videos has been made, uh, cutting open the, the, the soup a little bit and showing you how the soup is made, uh, I will record the video because it's all just kind of improv conversation with chat GPT stuff. And then at the end of that, I'll actually record a summary of what I just talked about and then put that at the start of the video because that's like kind of like the teaser, but it also serves as a summary of what just happened, right? Or what's going to happen, I guess, if you're just about to watch the video. So that I actually used as my slice to send off to GPT. So let's see. What this resulted in is this insomnia uh, clip here where you can see here where I'm calling insomnia is a, an app that allows you to do post requests. I use it all the time because curling is really annoying. <laughs> um, but you can see here on the right side that it has the title description and AI art prompt uh, that we, we kind of like pass into these different systems. So anyway, uh, let's talk about it. Yeah. So the first thing that I did was I just started off with a base command. I upped the max token count because I knew I was going to be writing a lot of code, um, but I stuck with 3.5. I didn't really think I needed four for this because it's a really straightforward kind of task. So basically I wanted to do four things. I wanted the user to upload an MP4 file. This is where I started. I ended up initially or ended up eventually doing MP3 and wave, uh, but because MP4 and MOV are just much heavier, right? Like there's just no way to like fit that in like a 10 minute video file is 30 mega or 15 minute video files 30 megabytes as an audio 
but it's over a gigabyte as video, right? So there's just no way that you can get that under the 25 limit. So then you call the Whisper API with a file transcription. Uh, you get the transcript from response.txt, and then you use the chat GPT API to create YouTube assets. So um, basically, one thing that I had to do was I had to give it the transcription API because I knew that that wasn't going to be in its data set. The OpenAI uh, Whisper API came out this year, and uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo ends its training at 2021. So unless we had access to the browsing plugin, which we don't on chat GPT MD, we would need to go do that manually. So I basically just gave it the transcription API documentation, and then I gave it the asset template of what I wanted. Specifically, I wanted three things. I wanted an eye-catching YouTube title for the transcript. I wanted a YouTube description, phrases a question to get people to want to read more and or click, and then a potential AI art prompt from this transcript. This this part's fun to me. I actually use this for my uh, website. All of my uh, photos are featured images on my website. But I like to use a random lesser known art period from history and then a color palette that fits the description and the title that it just generated. So kind of fun thing to do. So this is what GPT came up with. It was like, okay, so here's an upload file function that does some stuff. It takes the, the thing that you were just talking about with Whisper. Uh, then it calls chat GPT, which we can see here that this is actually broken and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and then it takes the title description and text, uh, splits it, maps it out, and then returns it as a 200. And then I was like, okay, so that's great. Let's just leave that where it is for now. Can you write the JavaScript that calls this function and starts the server? So, because, you know, this is all boilerplate. Like I've written this, these, how many lines is this? One, two, three, four, five. I've written these five lines of code countless times, thousands of times, but I never actually commit it to memory because it's never really the important part of the project, right? It's just the thing to get the server going. So you need to do this with every single project, but why would you ever remember, you know, like const express require express const app equals express app dot post upload upload file, which calls the function above and then app dot listen, right? Like I've done this countless times. I just don't remember how to do it. So I would rather just copy paste it. Uh, and then I was like, okay, you know, another thing I'm going to need is .env because I'm going to need my open AI API key. So it's like, okay, here's .env added to this, this same thing. It just updated the version, which was great. And then I was like, Hey, can you write? And I asked, you know, the nice thing about GPT is that you don't have to spell anything right. <laughs> you can kind of just, I was in bed. Remember like the context of this situation is I'm just literally sitting in bed in the morning, just one finger typing. Right fucking just dot, 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 right? So can you <laughs> write the implement file upload logic? And then it's like, sure. And it uses this uh, package that I've actually never seen before called Multer. So basically what Multer does is that it puts in, it uploads it to a new file called uploads using disk storage. It creates a new file name. Well, GPT wrote the code that makes it create a new file name. And then it uploads with the max file size or rejects it. Um, we can see here that it says, Hey, the file is too large if it's over the 25 megabyte limit, or it just has an error uploading the file because something else happened, which I actually needed to go back in later and change the code that like allows for that. So then we have the open AI thing, um, that does the create transcription, the whisper part that we just talked about above. And then I was like, Hmm, how would I make a curl request to this? Because I just wanted to kind of, I, at this point I was already testing an insomnia and it wasn't working and I couldn't figure out why the file upload was failing. But then it was like, I was like, maybe I'm just messing something up. Maybe it's supposed to be a multi-post or something. So I actually just ran the curl and then I just copied this and then actually just subbed in the path to the file and I ran into the same error. So I was like, okay, that's interesting. Like, why would that be happening? I'm getting this no such file or directory error from Multer um, when it's trying to create the unique file name. And then it tells me, well, the error message, no such file directory, usually means that the uploads folder hasn't been created yet. So use mkdir uploads to create the folder. And that actually did work. <laughs> so I did change the uploads folder. I think down here it's saying that if you already have a public folder, which most people do with Express, it'll just create that for you. Um, but that worked, right? So we can actually take a look at the code real quick to see any changes that I made in the final version and then close up the video. But Basically, we can see this, for example, this example, right? I passed in this transcript uh, from a Final Cut Pro thing. And then basically what I got was this says, in the following video, we're going to be taking a look at the poetry and alphabet dying because of large language models, yada, yada, yada. And then the result was, is AI killing poetry in the alphabet? 
the description was join us as we can explore the potential consequences of large language models on language, culture, and identity. What aspects are worth preserving and what can we do without uh, watch to the end for an exciting surprise and then create an AI art prompt ex- inspired by the data movement and exploring the absurdity of language. And then we actually got these two pretty interesting art piece thumbnails from uh, this prompt as well, right? This data movement, absurdity of language and the impact of technology on human compression, uh, uh, human expression. And I, that's what I used. I think I used this one for the thumbnail for that video. So if you've watched that video, which is on my channel, you can actually see <laughs> this uh, script running. So the only thing that I changed is that I made it so that it was 25 megabytes instead of 50 megabytes. I changed it to fit the chat completion because again, it didn't have the correct API. I probably on hindsight would have posted that too because it was really obsessed with just writing it as prompt. So I was like, no, 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 you have to write it as messages. I changed this content a little bit to be a bit more specific to kind of what I was looking for. Um, And then what else did I change? That's pretty much it. Everything else is pretty much what GPT gave me. Uh, You know, I think that one of the things that I'm excited about for the future of this channel is that uh, once I get access to Copilot X, I am planning on doing more like live coding, but I feel like coding is like really boring to watch in general on YouTube, but I think it'll be a lot more fun when you can use um, GPT and not have to switch context and just really quickly iterate and grab documentation where you need it and stuff like that too. And basically just do this. So I'm excited to do that in the future, but for now, we're going to stick to Obsidian. So thank you for watching. If you want to see this text transcript that you're just seeing here, you can go to my website, bramadams.dev and check it out in the description below and uh, have a good day.